A St. Louis couple called Mark and Patricia McCloskey became folk heroes to many across the country after they were confronted by a mob, a dangerous mob, outside their home and returned with firearms to protect it and themselves. This is what you were taught to do. It's what generations of Americans have done. It's the most basic right of all, the right of self-defense. The McCloskeys exercised that right, and now they're coming close to being destroyed. They stood up for themselves against the mob. The McCloskeys' fate remains in the hands of the mob in the form of the St. Louis Circuit Attorney General Kimberly Gardner. Gardner is a radical prosecutor, one of many elected in recent years, with financial backing from billionaire George Soros. In 2019, Gardner brought criminal charges in just 23% of the cases the St. Louis police brought her. Her policies have helped destroy that office, the St. Louis Circuit Attorney's Office. Since she took over, the prosecutor turnover there has surpassed 100%. Gardner's reaction to any criticism about this never changes. Alleged racial conspiracy against her and then move on. At the start of this year, Gardner sued the local police union and several city officials, accusing them of, quote, a racially motivated conspiracy to deny the civil rights of minorities. She charged them under the Ku Klux Klan Act, as if. After riots ripped through countless American cities, Gardner was clear about who she supported in it all. I've noticed that the attorney general is tweeting quite a bit about looters and rioters. And not about the fact that we have a history of police violence in the city and nation. And that has caused people to take to the streets yet again to demand for accountability and change in our criminal justice system. How dare you be angry about looting and crimes when the police are still out there enforcing the law? After the McCloskeys defended themselves, Gardner finally found a crime she cares about. She promised to have them punished if she could. I am disturbed by the events that occurred over this weekend where there were peaceful protesters who were met with guns and a violent assault. We must protect the rights to peacefully protest and any attempts to chill it through intimidation or use of force will not be tolerated. Since learning of these events over this weekend, I've worked with the public and the police to investigate these tragic events. I will use every extent of Missouri law to hold individuals accountable. Mark McCloskey joins us tonight, along with his attorney, Albert Watkins. Mr. McCloskey, first to you, thanks so much for coming on. And I'm glad you're on, because you will tell your own story rather than having it told for you by ideologues. Describe for us, if you would, why you believed you and your wife were threatened by these 300 people in your yard. Well, Tucker, you've got to, you've got to understand, my house sits right on the edge of a road called King's Highway, and our private place is Portland Place, where my wife and I were preparing to have dinner, maybe 70 feet from the gate. By the time we looked up, we saw the, the uh, marchers coming down King's Highway and getting loud. We looked over at the gate, and there's no police there. Our private security wasn't there. Nobody's there. And I look over at my wife, and I see all these people outside the gate. And then the gate bursts open. People start coming in. And then a flood of people start coming in. They're angry. They're screaming. They've got spittle coming out of their mouth. They're coming towards the house. And you know, on June the 2nd of this year, the, the uh, protests in downtown St. Louis went violent instantly. People, the looting and violence and rioting. I watched on live TV the 7-Eleven in downtown St. Louis from the moment the first window was broken throughout the looting process until the fire was started and then until the fire fully engaged the building and nobody came that entire time. I looked over at my wife and I said, Oh, my God, we're absolutely alone. There's nobody here to protect us but us. Uh. That was the same night retired police captain David Doran was murdered. When I saw that mob come through the gate with their rage and their, and their anger, I thought that we would be overrun in a second. By the time I was out there with my rifle, the people were 20 or 30 feet from my front wall. I've got a low wall that separates the house from, from my front yard. And so I was... I was literally afraid that within seconds they would surmount the wall, come into the house, 
kill us, burn the house down, and everything that I'd worked for and struggled for for the last 32 years. Tucker, I lived out in West St. Louis County in a nice, secure neighborhood. 32 years ago, we moved into the city and, and took on a project to restore a house that nobody else wanted. And, you know, we're, we were urban pioneers in those days, and uh, we've been there ever since working to, to build and maintain St. Louis and this, this very historic neighborhood. And I did, I saw it all going up in flames and my life destroyed in an instant. And I did what I thought I had to do to protect my hearth, my home, and my family. Well, no one was protecting you, and they were screaming at you and threatening you and threatening to murder your dog and harm you and your wife. What do you make of the attacks on you for doing what we used to believe every homeowner had an obligation to do? Why are they denouncing you, know, you as just, a racist? I don't understand. And, you know, here's, a, here's the interesting thing. I've spent my career defending people that are defenseless, for people that are having a hard time making their miracle happen, for people that don't have a voice. My black clients love us. The night that this happened, I had some of our black clients calling us up till 2.30 in the morning, telling us how wrong it was the way the press was writing us up, telling how wrong it was that, that we should be portrayed as racist. This is what I do for a living. I, I help people that are down and that need a hand and the people that need a voice. To call us racist is ridiculous and that had nothing to do with race. I wasn't worried what the race was of, this, of these the mob that came through my gate, I was worried that I was going to be killed. I didn't of care what, what race they were. It's disgusting. V very quickly, Mr. Watkins, do you think that the McCloskeys face the risk of being prosecuted in this? Well, given the fact that we have a political animal in uh, the circuit attorney's office, there is a risk. If the law prevails, long-standing Missouri law prevails, she's, they're fine. Yeah. Boy, I'm, we're certainly rooting for you. This is really a revealing moment and a travesty. I hope you're, I'm glad you're well. Thank you for coming on tonight. Mark McCluskey, Albert Watkins. Thank you.